For most of us, making a mistake at work won't come back to bite us. But when working with predatory animals, that's exactly what can happen. Mistakes cost lives. In this episode, we will see the brutal attack by a captive brown bear on its keeper. A merciless, ferocious attack that could have been avoided if it weren't for one crucial mistake. Hit the like button and subscribe. This is Fierce. We often hear about bear attacks, about people who've been attacked while exploring the wilderness, taken by surprise, taken off guard when a bear has appeared from nowhere. But bear attacks also happen, very rarely, in captivity. It's easy to assume that captive animals are somehow more docile, more tame than their wild counterparts. That perhaps if one ventured into their enclosures, they would turn and walk the other way. But this is not always the case. And in this next attack, a zoo handler makes a fatal error when he turns up for work one day to feed the zoo's only brown bear. A zoo in Andijan in the Kojaban district of Uzbekistan has made headlines when one of its bears mauled a keeper in January 2023. The footage was caught on CCTV cameras that were filming inside the bear's enclosure. The video reveals how the attack unfolded and the critical error made by the man moments before his death. Andijan is a city located in the southeastern edge of Uzbekistan's Fergana Valley. It's one of the oldest cities in the valley and was once an important point along what became known as the Silk Road. It's situated near Uzbekistan's eastern border with Kyrgyzstan and is perhaps most famous for being the birthplace of the first Mughal emperor. It was a normal day at the zoo. January 3, 2023. A zoo worker named only by his initials, A.G., was assigned to work with the captive bear. It was feeding time that afternoon, and he headed to the enclosure at around 4 p.m. The docile-looking bear was a popular attraction at the newly opened zoo. He was the sole bear on display and drew in crowds of visitors each year. When A.G. arrived to feed the animal, the bear was hidden away inside its den section of the enclosure. A.G. set about preparing the food outside the cage, and then when the food was ready, he unlocked the gate, slid open the security door, and placed the food inside the bear's enclosure. He momentarily stood inside the bear's enclosure, but he had made a fatal error. Something that was part of the standard procedure was to close the den door thus separating the bear from the outdoor section of the enclosure, separating the bear from the zookeeper. But for some reason, he had forgotten to do this. Maybe because the bear was out of sight, closing the door had slipped his mind. Whatever the reason, it turned out to be the last mistake he would make. Not realizing he had failed to secure the den door, the man turned to head back to the exit when he heard a heart-stopping sound. It was a low growl the sound of footsteps on the concrete floor. The hairs on the back of his neck stood on end and he immediately turned around. In shock and horror, he saw the enormous brown bear appearing from the den section of the enclosure. It sniffed the ground and then began to move toward the exit door. It was curious, it had not seen that door open before. But in a panic, the zookeeper hesitated before making his way towards the door. Should he have stayed still? Should he have laid down and played dead? There was nowhere for him to hide. The exit door was tantalizingly close. The only problem was the bear was standing between him and the door. Its huge body, over four feet at the shoulder, blocked the man's only way out. He hopped to one side, trying to go undetected as the bear was turned away from him, still investigating the open door. But he must have made a noise. The bear heard him and wheeled around. All of a sudden, the bear's attention was on the keeper. There was nowhere for the man to go, nowhere to run to. He was cornered, he was trapped. He could see the exit door just feet from where he stood, but the bear stood between him and safety. He tried to make a quick dash for it. It was so close, just a couple of yards away. He almost ducked past the huge animal, but as he did so, it took a swipe at him. Its seven inch paws knocked him to the ground. He felt his head smack onto the concrete step. The wind knocked from his lungs. He landed in the doorway. 
He was so close to making it out, so close to making it to safety, but the bear pulled him back. He tried to scramble to safety, but the bear wouldn't let him go. Face down on the ground, the man could feel the full force of the bear on top of him. It launched itself on top of the man, and he cried out for help. A.G. could smell the bear's breath. The man tried to push the bear's face away from his own, but his efforts were in vain. The sheer weight of the animal, up to 880 pounds or 400 kilograms, bearing down on him, pinning him to the ground. He couldn't move. He couldn't fight back. While the bear's body lay over the man, it clamped down with its jaws around his neck, viciously mauling him. He could hear the low growling as it mauled him. Its long claws sliced into his torso, and it bit down on his face and neck. He desperately tried to cover his head and neck from the attack, but the bear was ferocious. He didn't stand a chance. His energy was gone. He had no fight left to give and he lay motionless on the ground of the enclosure. Fellow workers ran to the enclosure. They could see the bear on top of their colleague. They could see the man's legs kicking furiously underneath the bear as he tried to fight it off. There was nothing his co-workers could do. They yelled at the bear, but it didn't stop. It didn't look up. His colleagues threw wooden planks and stones at the bear that seemed to have no impact on the bear. Instead, it dragged the man's limp body away from the door and into the center of its domain. From there, it continued to maul the man. Even when A.G. lay limp and lifeless and posed no threat, the bear continued its attack. Watching on in horror, two co-workers bravely stepped into the enclosure, armed with long poles. They whacked it on the back, hitting it over and over. The bear still refused to release the man, but the hits kept coming until finally the bear let go of A.G. and stepped backwards. Only then could they get to their friend. Only then could they grab hold of him and drag him out of the enclosure to safety. However, it was too late. The rescue efforts had come too late to save A.G.'s life. The man had succumbed to his injuries. He had died right there inside the enclosure. As they made a hasty exit from the bear's enclosure, dragging A.G.'s body with them. The bear initially walked away from the scene, but at the last minute turned back towards them and made a run at them. Was the bear trying to protect its kill? Was it defending its territory? It's unknown what happened to the bear following the incident. The district police were dispatched to the scene and an investigation began into the conditions under which the employee died. Although zoo animals may be born in captivity, their natural instincts are still strong. It is possible that the bear felt threatened in its territory, much like a wild bear would, and it reacted in the only way it knew how.